Caroline had tapped into a large and responsive market of young listeners that weren't being catered for. Within days of its launch, the ship was besieged with mail. It claimed 7 million listeners in its first week. Normally cautious advertising executives have begun to take notice of the bright, unorthodox style of a new medium. And that, I'm afraid, winds up the early show from me, yours truly, Simon D, for this morning. My last one on board for, should I say, at least two weeks. Perhaps three weeks. Perhaps rather. That's when I was beamy again. Anyway, I've very oh, much enjoyed sitting here for the three hours every morning and playing your record round till, as we say, nearly nine o'clock. So, until we meet again at this time in the morning, take very good care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Caroline's only commercial competition was from the continent, from the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, the nightly station of the stars, which relied on block advertising from the major record labels which are so dismissively shunned Ronan O'Reilly. For all that's worthwhile, your radio dial is on Radio Luxembourg. Good evening, friends. This is Horace Batchelor at the microphone. Kingdom. K-E-Y-N-S-H-A-M Fincham, Bristol And hello there record fans, wherever you are Once again it's time for another round up of all your favorite British and American recording artists Brought to you by the Decca Record Company For your special delight tonight Oh, excuse me, madam Yes? I work for Luxembourg, you see Oh, I am sorry I'm afraid I can't help you No, 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 no I was hoping you'd play chaperone to this young fellow <laughs> This is OHR Offshore History Radio. OHR, a free and independent radio station from the Netherlands. If you are interested in offshore radio, feel free to check out our 24-7 non-stop offshore radio video documentaries with stories of the golden days of offshore radio. Go to bit.do slash offshore radio. I'll repeat, that is bit.do slash offshore radio. Feel free to send your comments, reactions, and reception reports. Our email address is ohrradio at outlook.com. That is ohrradio at outlook.com. For your attention. Within weeks, Caroline faced an offshore competitor. By the end of April, the Mi Amigo, once the home of the Swedish pirate ship Radio Nord, dropped anchor off Frinton in Essex close by the MV Caroline. On May the 12th, it began regular broadcasting. Hey, I'm on our first day, our day, bringing you final broadcasting and the finest sounds around. At 201 meters, you're in tune with the Bob Scott Show, Living, Loving, Happy Radio Atlanta, the ship that rocks the ocean. Now the summer fun time here on the good ship Radio Atlanta stands out. But for a quirk of fate, Radio Atlanta could have been Britain's first offshore pirate. The project had been devised by an Australian music publisher Alan Crawford two years before. He had been in negotiation with Ronan O'Reilly, with both their ships fitted out in the Irish port of Green Ore, conveniently owned by O'Reilly's father. And not surprisingly, Caroline got the priority. George Saunders is Atlanta's engineer. Alan Crawford told me that there had been a trading agreement originally between the two organizations. Me and me goes to go down to London, and the Caroline ship was to go to the Isle of Man. It didn't work out like that, I'm afraid. The Frederica sailed first. She bombed the town to the Thames Estuary and across the Rapid Road of Caroline. And as a snack, they also had the crystals on board which controlled power transmission frequencies. So when we came along, we couldn't do anything. And we were sitting off from some time. And to transmit. But within six weeks of Atlanta going on air, the two organizations were fought to make peace and restored the original plan. 